Hello and welcome to your next tutorial on C++ and today we're going to be discussing how to place quotes inside strings, nesting if statements, nesting, exiting, and continuing loops. So it's quite a bit of stuff, so let's get started. So the first thing I'd like to show you is, well, how to put quotes inside strings since it might not be quite too clear. So first of all, let's create a string called input and, hmm, you know what, I'll, I actually want to do it manually because, well, it's whatever we put in. So Let's call it output instead. So we have a string here, and let's have it say, hmm, the weather man says, some quotes, it's going to rain tomorrow. Okay, so we're quoting him, right? So that's going to work out. Wait a minute, why is it underlined? expected a semicolon wait a minute well what's going on here well when you're creating a string or a string literal after the compiler goes past your second string right here or your I'm excuse me your second quotation mark it assumes everything after that is going to be a, um, a comment or, or excuse me not a comment it's going to be a regular code so as you can see the it is black but the rest of this is red the reason why the rest of this is red is because there's a single quote right here an apostrophe so you know, if I got rid of this, then the rest would go back to black. But anyway, so we got ourselves a problem here. So how do we solve this? Well, in order to solve this, all you have to do is use a little trick, and that is the backslash. You throw in a backslash right here. Uh, a backslash by itself will automatically assume that the next uh, character inside your string will be used as a character. So it's kind of like a special thing. You put the backslash and it will automatically treat the next character, which is this quote, as a character. So that got rid of that problem. And we also have to solve it over here as well, or on the inside. So I'll throw one there. And now all of our troubles are gone. Now also, if you want a backslash to actually appear, then you would have to use two. So obviously it didn't, doesn't work right there because... Uh, that'll cancel out what I wanted. So, like, I'll just throw in two right here, and let's see how that works. So, first of all, I need to actually print this. So, see how it outputs, and let's run this. So, it says the weatherman. See, we got one backslash, as you can see. So, we were able to get a backslash to pop up, and we got our quotes there. So, everything worked. So that's really, really cool. So, that's all I wanted to show you with that. So, the next thing I wanted to show you is nesting. So basically, nesting is putting one element inside of another element, like putting one if statement inside of another if statement, or putting a loop within a loop. So I'm going to show you a quick if statement really quickly. So I'm going to create a, uh, let's see here, an int. Uh, what should I do? I should go, hmm, let's go string first and see out. Type something. And then, uh, whoops. CN. I should be using the get line. What is wrong with me? You should be using the get line. Don't. Uh, I don't know. So let's do some if statements here. So. You know what? I'm starting to realize that I probably should have not have done strings because I want to check for multiple things. So I'll make it an int instead. Sorry about that. Okay, so let, that was a quick fix. So if. First is greater than five let's say if it's greater than five then inside of our curly braces we could put more if statements so you could do another if and an else let's try that so if it's greater than five then if first is less than ten then we'll have something print that says I don't know perfect and if not, whoops, and line. And I'll copy this. Whoops, I'll probably want another end line there. And then I'll copy this again. Copy, paste. And I'll have it say too high. Then we could actually put more code that actually prints out. So I'll put something out here that says, uh,. After the nested if statement, so there we go, and we can actually have something that comes out before it. So I want to show you all this at once. If statements are pretty easy though, 
So this is probably just a piece of cake for you guys. You're probably like, come on, Adam, I get this. Uh, before the nested if statements, I would just say statement. Oh, I didn't even spell that right. I'm sorry. There we go. Statement. I don't know. Okay, so let's run this. So let's control F5. And let's throw in six. So we get our before the nested if statement. So it said if it's greater than five to execute this, it did before the nested if. Then we went into this nested if statement right here. If it's less than 10, print perfect. If not, then it's too high. Because that means it must be greater than 5, but also greater than 10. So, but, it, but it wasn't greater than 10, so it said perfect. Then after the nested if statement. So that's really, really cool. Now this time, let's put in 15. Now we get the too high. Then if we put in something that doesn't even work at all, like a 4, nothing happens at all because it didn't even go inside this if statement to begin with. So everything in between these two, uh, these two guys right here, see them highlighted, uh, goes inside this if statement. So it's all its own thing. So that's really, really cool. Now let's actually nest some loops, shall we? So first of all, let's create a while loop. So I'll call int i equal to zero and while, let's say, i is less than five. I know I'm putting in solid numbers, but I just want to show you a really good, uh, easy example. I'll call it string. And, well, let's actually put in a for loop inside this. We can actually put a loop within a loop. So for. And this is also really, really important, because it's really important that you understand uh, how to read nested loops. And I think this example will uh, do just that for you. So j is less than 5, colon j plus plus and at the end of the while we'll need an i plus plus so notice how I when you use more than one loop uh, you go from i to j so these are different increments for us so the first thing before we go into that loop we will actually want to print something so c out let's have the first come out shall we so c out i I think this is something along the lines of what I did before. And there we go. And then inside here, we'll actually want to do this again. So I'll copy this. And type something again. And this, But this time it will be second. So we're going to type in the two things that we printed. So OK, so now we have two variables. And this time I'm going to copy this copy and paste but make this a j this time and make this second so let's see how this works so I'll click save and let's run this so type something I'll type in up and down let's look at this so there's a reason why I want all these numbers to pop up so first of all I typed in up and down for first and second so then we went into our loop while i is less than 5, execute this code. So with the c out, first it printed the i, which was the 0, and then the up that we printed for first. So 0 up, 0 up. Then it hit this for loop where it set j equal to 0, and while j is less than 5, to print um, j and whatever second. So j was 0, down, and then it kept going through this loop five times. So 0 down, 1 down, 2, 3, 4. But then when it was 5, it said, oh, can't do it, and then it skipped. Then it incremented i by 1, and then went back up to this while to start over again. So now it says 1 up instead of 0 up. But because we used a for loop, j was set back to 0 as soon as we went back into it. So with a for loop, what's really neat about them is that it starts over. So you can do all five downs again. So you have uh, your first up, uh, then 5, your second, 5, 3, then 5, 4, then 5, then your fifth time five. So that's really, really cool. So we get, so with this nested, we get five groups of this guy right here. And it's really easy to differentiate uh, when each one starts thanks to this guy right here. So you can see with the ups, you can see how it splits each group. So that makes it really legible, really easy to read. Now, if we used a while loop, 
instead. So if we used a while loop here instead, so if I went while, let's say, uh, j is less than 5, of course I'd have to create j up here, int j is equal to 0. Uh, this will not be so uh, forgiving, my, should I say. So I'll type in up again, I'll type in down, and oh goodness, we have a, a loop. Oh goodness, uh, that was my bad. I made a mistake. I actually wanted j to increment here. Well, now you guys got to see an infinite loop. That's very important for you guys to see failure. Uh, and I don't mean that in a bad way. It really is important. So up, down, and there we go. So this is what I wanted you to see. So notice how when you use a while loop, when we went into this while loop, we got what we expected. Then we went into this, and we got our first group of five downs. But when we went to the next up, uh, notice how it didn't go back into this second while loop again. It just went with the ups and never did the downs again. And that's because J never went back to zero like it did in the for loop. So in order to fix that, if you want to use a while loop, uh, right before you go into that loop, set J equal to zero here. So if you click save, and then you run this, uh, this should work now. So I'll put an up and then I'll throw in down and there you go now it works again now there's two more things I like to show you and that's the continue and the break okay so now using the for loop now everything should increment properly so if I type in up this is why I always use for loops with the uh, inside here okay so now let's look at this well wait a minute we only have four downs instead of five is something wrong well look how when it eyes at zero then I's will, or excuse me, J's is zero, J's one, then J's three. Notice how in each group two is skipped. Well, what the continue keyword does is, if a certain condition is true, well, well, in here, in this instance, you can use the continue however you'd like. But the way I used it is, I checked if J is equal to two, continue. Now, what the continue means is to skip the rest of the code in this loop and go on to the next iteration. So it skipped number two and went right to three. However, bear in mind, if this code was uh, in this space right above the if statement, then it wouldn't have mattered. It still would have executed. But since the if came first here, it was able to continue before it ever saw this code. So we went right on to the next iteration. Now the break... Ah, uh, I didn't mention the break in the last tutorial. And two tutorials in the switch statement, I said I was going to mention break in the loops. You thought I was lying, didn't you? But anyways... No, no, I was going to show you, I was showing you the break, I promise, so I was going to. Let's see how the break differs from the continue. So I type out up, then I type out down. Now we have a lot fewer downs. And you could probably tell the difference between the continue and the break. Uh, the break, just like in the switch statement, took us out permanently out of the switch statement. The, likewise, the break statement will permanently take you out of this loop. So once we got to j equals 2... Uh, it broke out of loop entirely and continued with this parent loop. So it, it didn't even bother finishing with numbers 3 and 4. So that's basically the difference between the break and the continue, if you want to remember that. So I'll just throw up up here. Continue will skip that, or skip to next iteration and break. Uh, exits, loop, or code, whatever you have, permanent, uh, I'll just type it indefinitely. There you go. Okay, so continue, skips out of the next iteration, and uh, break, exits, loop, or code indefinitely. So, I hope this tutorial was helpful for you, I'm running out of time now, and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Okay, you can skip the rest of this uh, video. I'm just going to show you uh, a little project that you could do. And that's to make a times table, basically. 1 times 1 equals 1. 1 times 2 equals 2. All the way to 12 times 12 equals 144 using a nested loop. So first we'll create an integer called i. Set that equal to 0. And let's create our while loop. Oh, you know what? I'm probably going to want that to start at 1. Uh, we don't want any of the 0 times 0s or anything like that. Because anything times 0 is 0. So while i is less than or equal to 12, execute the following piece of code. And we'll want a for loop. And for int j, 
And the reason why I'm using a for loop is because we want J to keep starting back to zero each time. Or back to one, excuse me. Uh, so J is less than or equal to 12 and J plus plus. And let's see out. Uh, what do we want to see out? We'll probably see out, hmm, I space times space J and another space equals and we'll throw in I times J, something like that and line and let's look at this, let's see how this works and we need to increment I as well each time and is there an error here? Oh, I need my uh, these guys. There we go. So let's see how this works. So I'll press uh, uh, Control F5 and well, that worked. So let's go all the way to the top and look at this. Oh, that's going to take a while. There we go. So basically all I did here was make a little while loop and while I is less than or equal to 12 to execute this for loop and while j is less than or equal to 12 to execute this code. Print i so i is 1 12 times and then it goes through the j 12 times while increments up by 1 so this, these are all the j's and then it shows us our little multiplied result so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 then 2 times 1, 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 3 is 6 so that's really really cool and that's why I used a for loop because we want the j to keep going back to 1 each time so every time j gets to 12 once we start the while loop again and it goes increments up by one, the J will start back to one. So this is a really cool way of looking and understanding how to read nested loops. This this is usually how I'll read nested loops. Like if I have a test working with nested loops, I'll kind of write out what I and J is equal to as it maneuvers, I guess, through your code. So that's all I really want to show you. And as you can see, it went all the way down to 12 times 12 equals 144. So that's really, really cool. So. That's what I wanted to show you in this tutorial, and again, uh, I'll see you next time.